welcome you once again to yet another episode of my life is my testimony tonight promises to be another mind-blowing and amazing night with you know a continuation of a super you know um mind-blowing testimony from you know our brother peter and i know that you cannot wait to hear the rest of his testimony tonight I will encourage you one more time to share this video, this link with someone. We are live on Facebook. If you're watching us on Facebook, please, I will encourage you and I will, you know, plead with you. If you have not liked our Facebook page, please go up that video and hit that like button. If you are watching us live from YouTube, please do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Call a friend to call a friend to tell a friend that right now my life is my testimony is on live. And you know what? That testimony that you we couldn't finish, we are about to hear the rest of it tonight. So you know what? Right now, just before we finish, pick up that phone, send that text to that friend, call that family member, call that brother, call that sister, call that church, you know, member of yours and say to them, my life is my testimony is here tonight and tonight of course we are proudly sponsored by omega house multimedia omega house multimedia are you know professionals in graphic designing they do printing of all sorts they are videographers they are photographers they do souvenirs t-shirts brochures leaflets business cards and they take care of all your printing needs they are located on 74 west green road and 15 five ns and you can call them on 020 358-18794 please do not hesitate to contact omega house multimedia for all your printing needs tonight as well we are also sponsored by bloomington bloomington is located opposite the tottenham bus garage if you are around that area, you know, pop in for a quick meal. And don't forget to mention my life is my testimony for a special discount. Tonight, once again, you know what? I encourage you, hit that like button, share that video, share this video with your friends, your neighbors, your family members. Share it with anybody that you think that, you know, in fact, share it with every contact. Share it with everybody on your contact list. Before we go in to hear this testimony, I, I'll give you a few minutes, a few seconds, even before, you know, we hear a little bit of exhortation from, from the word. You know, I just want to encourage you. And please do not forget, like our Facebook page and do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You know what? what you know why you need to do all these things? So that you do not miss another episode of my life is my testimony so beloved tonight before we hear you know that continuation of the testimony we will want to hear you know um a word of exhortation from you know the word of god and it is done by no other person by our own resident evangelist evangelist bright other day evangelist bright hello good evening Bethel. good evening over to you man of god well Mm. God bless you, Brother Bedford. Um, you know, I and and thank you. God bless our viewers, everybody watching us tonight, and everybody who's been following us. God richly bless you as we continue to share and um, you know, also continue to take the gospel of, of our Lord Jesus Christ to all nations and to everyone. God richly bless you all. Um, I would like to also give thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ who has given us this opportunity. You know, I'm always amazed and always, um, you know, glad that we share such a wonderful testimony every time because our testimony is ever sure and is ever true. That our testimony is something that people can learn from. Our testimony is what that we know that from our life, from our background, from the pains, the trials, the tribulations, that how that we have encountered grace through our Lord Jesus Christ and that we are saved so that we can become new in Christ. You know, um, Tonight, also, I would like to, you know, give, give greetings to um, um, one of our brothers, um, Abid, um, Abid John, who is in Pakistan, who I'll be ministering with those guys tomorrow um, in Pakistan. You know, um, greetings to you all, the, um, to lab the Labors of Love Ministry Pakistan International and, um, you know, the New Revival um, Church of Pakistan International. God bless you guys for the great works you are doing there. You know, among the midst of adversaries and all the things you are doing, great, great job. Um, tonight, I would like to share with you a word, a word of God, a word of truth, you know, um, and I would like, if you have your Bible, you can open up Psalm 90, Psalm, Psalm 90, 
Psalm 90. Now David was pondering about life and looking at life and he say, was saying a prayer as he was writing the Psalms. And I would like us to just hear a bit of this word. Now, David says in Psalm 90 and he reads, he said, Lord, you have been our dwelling, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by. Or like a watch in the night. Yet, you sweep people away in the sleep of death. Wow. I mean, you know, a thousand years is nothing but just like a day to God. Amen. And then he says, they are like the new grass of the morning. He's talking, to, he's talking about human beings, the way we are, time on this earth. In the morning, it springs up new. But by evening, it dries and withers. It shows you how short our time, our life is. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your ignition. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures it. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they are quickly past and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger. Your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Oh Lord, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Amen. I mean, David was sitting down and he was pondering about this Psalms before he was writing. This is a time, you know, from all his trials, all his problems and all the things that he's gone through. David knew that he had to repent. And tonight the Lord is saying to some of us, you need to repent because your days are not yours. Your days are numbered. Like David said, even our days are yet by 70 and 80. We live in a generation and in a time where people's not even reaching those age. People are dying at a young age, at 20, at 15, at 16, at, 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 at 25, at 30. And we're saying, what a shock. David's reflecting on life and saying, Lord, teach us to number our days. Teach us to remember our time so that we may be humble, that we shall know that there is a true God. That our days are yet full of troubles and things. Your days are troubled because why? You have not known the truth. You know, in the Bible, it says in 1 John 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. And that without the Word, nothing was made. The Word was referring to Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says that Jesus, as it says in John 3, 16, He said, For God so loved the world, He gave His one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes will never perish, but have everlasting life. It means that you have life and have it. Like Jesus said, I've come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. As David was reflecting and was saying that even though we are dust, every human being is dust. That's why that's what God said from the beginning when man sinned. He said, that's you were made, that's you shall return. That you should know that because we are dust and we are nothing, we have to know that our time at this, our time will one day come short. That when it comes short, where are we going? Where is the end of all men? What is going to be your end? Are you going to heaven or are you going to hell? These are two places of promise. Now the Lord is giving you another chance today to accept salvation. To give yourself to Jesus and have a new eternal life. Be a new creature. He said, behold, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. This is what Sam David was reflecting. Looked at the years and said, wow, how would I be? He said, teach me to number my days so that I may apply wisdom, which is Psalm 90 verse 12. You know, teach me how to number my days. You know, we must think about, I know that our days are numbered. We had, you know, our great, great grandfather, our great, great grandparents, our great, great our, our people that lived, but they all died and they're gone. All the rich people, you know, they died and they, some of them are gone. Michael Jackson is dead. You can't find him now. Steve Jobs, he's dead. He's gone. He had billions. He made millions of billions of money. You know, think about all the richest people because riches and money can't buy life. But it's only the one that has life that can give it. He's the resurrector. That's why he said, give us life three days. And in three days, I'll resurrect. And in truth, he did resurrect on the third day. He's now sitting at the right hand of the Father. But I came to tell you that one day he's coming to judge the living and the dead. And that you, he wants to make sure that everybody's name is written in the Lamb Book of Life, as he says in Revelation 20. If anyone whose name is not found in that book after your short time, because a thousand years is only nothing but one day to God. It's, does man have a year to live for a thousand years? That's a question I want you to reflect on. Give your love to Jesus and it will be the best decision you make. So as you listen to this testimony, may it make a difference to you and may God bless you. Peace. Shalom.
God bless you, Evangelist Bright, um, for that um, word of exaltation. And yes, so I believe that, you know, after this word, word of exaltation, you have finally sent all your contacts the link. If you haven't, don't worry. I give you about like five seconds. I give you a few seconds to please contact all, you know, people on your list. Say, share this with them and say, this is my life, this is my testimony. You need to watch this. Tonight, we have once again, Brother Peter in our midst. Brother Peter, you're welcome back to my life, it's my testimony. Good evening, brother. Yes. God bless uh, you for, you know, coming once again to my life, my testimony. And tonight, Brother Peter is going to share, you know, the rest of his testimony. Brother Peter used to be a Muslim and he converted, you know, to Christianity. And if you watched last episode when he was here, you know what we're talking about. He has a lot to share with us. You know, I was really dumbfounded last week on the last episode. I really, you know, was surprised at some of the amazing things that he was telling me his encounters and all that. But yes, today we have him back here with us to finish his testimony. So, Brother Peter? Yeah, good evening, brother. Yes. And peace of Christ be with everyone. Yes. Amen. And I'm Amen. happy to be here Amen. to share my testimony and that's right. be a living testimony for others. Hallelujah. So, Hallelujah. So, I mean, going back, you know, recap. Let's just go over quickly how you converted, yes. you know, then we'll go yes. to the wise. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so as I was saying last time, uh, you know, my mom, you know, she was always looking for ways to, you know, bring me out from the darkness I was living in or a severe depression I used to have. And uh, one day it happened to be a day for my mom to attend to a church and that Sunday, she went to the ch church church service in the in the evening, and then by the time she came back home at night and met me, when I asked her, you know, mom, where were you? Where did you go today? And so on. She said, oh, uh, today I went actually to a uh, I went to a church actually to see how ev how everything is and you know to see what is what is all about. And then uh, I asked her. I was very surprised because obviously. I was looking at my mom as someone very religious mm. and I did not expect her to attend to a church service. Right. So it was very surprising for me to hear from her that she has been there and visited. Mm. So I asked her, you know, how was it? Okay, how was it? And did you see anything special? Was there anything different that you want to share with me? But all I remember from the conversation I had with her that night was that she said to me, you know what, I've seen, I, I saw a lot of young people there. I saw a lot of young people there who were very loving and very friendly. Mm -hmm. So the moment I've heard that, I began thinking to myself, you know what, you know, I might go, actually, I might go actually and check it out and see what, what it's all about. But even before I say to my mom, you know, can I go and check it out or can I go for myself and see, uh, my mom herself told me, you know what, I want you to go next week mm. and check it out for yourself. Then I said, all right, because obviously that time I had severe depression, you know, I was dealing with uh, suicidal spirits, you know, all sorts of things. I was living in the darkness, so, and I was looking for a way out. Whatever it takes, you know, however, I can be free from the bondage that I had. So I said, okay, next week I'm going to check out my fine friends. You know, I was sure. thinking to myself, you know, that could be the way out. It might be, you never know. So I've tried that out. I waited for a week and then uh, I went to a church. I went to a youth service mm. at five o'clock that time. And uh, the moment I walked in the church, I saw a group of young people mix from every background from every culture from every country you know and i saw them you know smiling you know deeply you know with the joy and you know playing with each other you know everyone friendly everyone loving as my mom was telling me so the moment i saw that you know i felt like everything changes mm -hmm. from that time i felt like you know 
something like a wind hit me mm. and you know went in me from uh, receiving the energy from those group of people because I didn't see it for a very long time actually I never saw it before the joy and the peace they used to carry among themselves so it happened uh, on, on that day when I found myself in church uh, I really liked it mm. because you know as I said you know the, the energy I was receiving you know I do call it energy now but it was God. I believe that was God. You know, when God, I believe God touched me from that moment I entered to the church. You know, because I believe I was chosen even before I was born. So uh, from that day, you know, uh, I began playing with kids. You know, I began, you know, seeing them worship the Lord. You know, I saw them, you know, uh, eating together. You know, playing together, sharing the word from the leader, the leaders who were leading that time. And from that week, I've decided to go and be involved in whatever they are, they are doing there. So, so at what point did you give your life to Christ? Because, you know, I, I believe that there's a difference between, you know, wanting to associate. Yeah. And then, you know, at that point where it hit you to say that, you know, I need to go one step further. At, at what point did that hit you? Well, you know, I couldn't speak English very well that much. Mm -hmm. That, that time mm. so I was forced to stay and see for myself that's why it was a process for me to convert it took a time so and it was a comparison for me because you know I knew my religion that time you know the religion I had which was Islam that time but I didn't know much about Christianity so I had no option then to carry on going there and seeing for myself so that was the process I was going through. So for a year, I've just began uh, going among those people, you know, and week by week, my it helped my English out as well. So my English was improving week by week as I was more involved with uh, those kind of, those type of people. Because obviously I wasn't speaking English. Although everyone came from a different background, but they all spoke, spoke English. So that helped me, uh, helped me out a lot in terms of learning English. So as more I was learning the English, as more I was learning from the Bible, as more I was learning about the kingdom, as they were explaining. So for a year, I was going to those uh, events and uh, uh, any other events they were having in a church. So I was attending to it. And after a year, uh, I've made my decision to become a Christian when I've when I had enough time, you know, comparing Islam and Christianity after I learned what Christianity is all about. So after a year, you know, I went to my mom uh, one day and I said, I was coming back from the church, actually. And on, on the way back, uh, you know, I felt, you know, now it's a time. I know both religions from both sides. I've compared them enough for a year and I know what is all about everything. So on the way back home from church, I've decided to become a Christian, give my life to Christ. Okay. I, still didn't, I still didn't know much about mm. things, but I believe I knew enough in order to be convicted to, you know, to, to, to accept what is right for me that time. Mm -hmm. So on my way home from church, I went to my mom at my house and I told her, Mom, I want to come sit down. I want to tell you something here. Yeah. And then she came and, you know, she was a bit worried because I believe she already knew, mm. you know, mothers, you know, they already feel something, you know, they know about the children, how, what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. So she was kind of surprised already, you know, she was already expecting certain things. I could tell from, from her face. So when I went to my mom, I said, mom, come sit down, let me tell you something. She says, son, uh, what is it you're going to tell me? And she was very stressed. I could tell mm. from her, her eyes and her face, she was stressed. Because she knew she's gonna hear something that she's not expecting to hear, mm. and that time obviously she was Muslim, okay. and she was heavily involved in her belief. So I told her, "Mom, you know I've made a decision. I want to convert to Christianity." The moment I said that to my mom, she became really angry, and then she started, you know, shouting. You know, she started. Uh, why was she angry? What, she was the same person that took you to church. I know that that's what I'm saying. It's a bit funny, but she didn't expect me 
to convert. Mm -hmm. As I said, she was just looking for ways for me to come out from depression through friends or something. She didn't think I would give up Islam one day, mm. you know. So when I told her that, she became very angry at me. You know, she didn't want to speak to me for for some time. You know, she was stressed out, frustrated. You know, very angry, putting pressure on me and everything. Uh, but I've made my decision mm. to become a Christian, and then uh, I've waited uh, for for a week. You know, still meditating more on. The choose the choice I'm gonna make okay. in life. Mm -hmm. So I went to a church, and then uh, before everyone attends, and in, in uh, earlier than everyone comes, so I went directly to the office of the leaders, the pastors, and I, and they were very surprised when they saw me that early. I told them, you know what, guys, I came to tell you something. They said, oh, good. Why? Why is it you gonna say? I told them, you know, I made my decision, and now I wanna convert to Christianity. So I want you to pray for me. So the moment I told them that they became very happy, you know, they accepted me with love, you know, uh, they were so happy for me. So that was a time, you know, uh, I gave my life to Christ and I let them pray for me. And then I was praying with them, you know, and that's how I converted. But yeah. So, so why, why, why now to the why question? Why did you convert? Mm. Well, as I said, you know, because I was a Muslim before, mm -hmm. I was thinking to myself, why is Allah not helping me when I'm asking him for help? Why is he not there? Mm. If he's there, why is he letting me go through all those things, through all those darkness? Why? Mm. Because I was thinking to myself, you know, if you if you believe in if I'm believing that God, it should be something that happens right but as as much as i was you know searching for him for allah he was not there you know as much as i was trying to see who that god is he was not showing himself to me but as more i was getting closer to the true god more stuff i was learning more things were making sense to me the, the depression was leaving me bit by bit you know i was seeing improvement so I saw something that I did not see in Islam, Pro progression. Yeah. I didn't see no progression to, towards life. Sure. I was a stuck. I was the same person. Yeah. But now when I'm looking at myself, I'm different from last year. Okay. Last year I was different than a previous year. Mm -hmm. Next year I'm going to be different than now. You see, it's always progression. You know, there's always you become a different person so each did, time. So did you feel a sense of um, peace and a sense of hope? Yes, in, I did. In Christ? Which was something different exactly. to how you was feeling before. Yeah, exactly. And, and, so, and, and can you share a bit more about that, please? Yeah. So what happened was, uh, when I was asking, when I was praying after I became a Christian, I began seeing results. So if I had depression when I was praying, I was becoming calm. Mm -hmm. So if I didn't have hope, my hope was increasing day by day, mm -hmm. and I began becoming very close to that being that was helping me out mm -hmm. and then as no i was becoming close to him he was becoming close to me wow. so you know you see it's a pro it's a it's a, a process it's a process it takes time you know as more you become close to god as more he's going to become close to you and that doesn't happen overnight you know you have it's a, it's a process it takes time that's what i'm saying you know each year each day you know each hour through prayer and through meditating uh, to, to the Bible, to the Bible, uh, to the Word, you know, you uh, you increase your spirit, you build up your spirit, you know, and you become a new person, you know. That's the whole point of being born again, you know. You do become born again, but it doesn't stop there, you know. You're gonna, you know, it says, uh, "My followers shall bear fruits," right? We, have, we shall bear fruits. So fruit happens by uh, you have to hear first. That's right. Then you have to put in action what you're hearing. Yeah, yeah. And then when you do that, when you follow the process, then you're going to see fruits. And that's what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. I was following the process. I was hearing it, and I was putting it in action. As, and as more I was doing that, uh, a better person and a more new person I was becoming. So that's how, it began. That's how everything began. And then... Uh, 
I became, so, became someone strong through prayer, through hardcore prayer, through hardcore worship, through attending every every service, to not missing out anything, to give give out everything. Why? I believe I gave it all because I was desperate. You know when you know when you're someone uh, searching for help, mm. you never receive it. Okay. Once you receive it, you won't let that go from the person who gave it to you. That's right. You see, you see what I'm saying. That's mm. the nature of human beings. Mm. So that's what I saw, because I didn't experience certain things that my heart desire mm. before in Islam, but I began seeing them in Christianity. You know, that led me to fully convince myself and believe. You know. The work I'm working now, yes. the fate I've chosen now, is is actually true, because there's results in it. Results. It's not empty. Yeah. So that's how everything was. But what did you? So in in the previous um you know faith that you was you, you didn't find under this. Did you feel there was a sense of restriction? Did you feel a sense of that was what was keeping you in the state of the depression that you was in and the state of um stress that you was going through? Yes. And that's why you needed to try something new. Yes, so 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 basically, you know, you know, you know, Islam is a religion. Yeah. Christianity is not a religion; okay. it's a personal relationship, mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of Christianity. And this is something you can't found found in Islam. Right. There's no relationship, you know. There's no relationship with God. Yeah. We just pray, you know, and then if He's so good, if you do everything according to Him, then He might answer your prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is like fifty-fifty. It's like luxury. That's why Muslims, when you ask them, where are you going when you die? They're going to say, inshallah. It mm -hmm. means God willing. Mm -hmm. We're going to go certain place. We're going to go to heaven. We're going to go there. Mm -hmm. So they're not secure. Mm -hmm. They don't know where they're going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see? And if you don't have security in your heart, you're going to have problems. That's right. Such as, you know, uh, you're going to have doubts. Mm -hmm. You're going to always have questions in your head. You know, you, you, you're always going to be in fear. You're always gonna have struggles we seen in your head because you don't know what's gonna happen. Right. So that's how I was. You know, in Islam, I had, I had, uh, I had peace, but it wasn't long term, right. very temporarily. Mm -hmm. So okay. it was like like a drug. You see, when you take a drug, the moment you take it, it's good, but the moment you let go, everything goes goes away, and you wanna go towards it again. So it's not gonna be continuously think. But in Christianity, I saw uh, the peace that is in Joe. Right. It's there all the time. It's there with me in the morning. It's there with me at night. It carries on. You see, even if you're not faithful, God is still more. God is, is, is faithful. Right. But in Islam, that's not the case. If you're not faithful, you're not going to receive any, anyone who's going to be faithful to you, especially God. Because Islam is a law, is a religion. And breaking certain laws is going to have punishment. But in Christianity, we don't have that no more, you know. On the cross, Lord Jesus Christ, he took the punishment of um, death. Right. So the punishment for sin was death. Right. So for if 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 you want to follow, if you were going to follow that law of, you know, committing a sin and dying, I don't think much people were alive by now. Right. There was going to be very, very few people around, right? So we are lucky enough, you know, all glory to the God to have Jesus, you know, to die for us on the sin and remove the uh, the, the punishment of death. Right. So he right. died, so we shall live. Also, also, in, in, you know, in bringing that, that's where you said you had doubts. You know, what was the doubts that was creeping in your mind in in, in, in the faith that you was? That's one question. Well, so things, I mean, as he's saying, with regards to things that, you know, I would say doctrines. Yes, doctrines. Yeah. Yes. In, in, in Islam, that. You know, you, he was not comfortable with exactly, what he was not sure. Doubt, yeah. What were some of those things? Uh, you know, uh, one of the things that really bothered me was that why is it God always want to punish people? Where is the mercy? Because as more I was, you know, reading the Quran, as more I was being involved with Muslims, I was not seeing, I was not seeing, I was not hearing the answer. No one was giving me an answer from about, you know, where is the mercy of God? Because the God I'm seeing now, the God I'm reading in, in the scripture, is someone who wants to punish all the time. Mm. You know, in a, in a most horrible way, physically and spiritually. So it made me think, what kind of God, you know, would allow such things? You know, that was one. The other thing was about, you know, uh, the final destination. As I said, 
if you ask even a righteous Muslim who prays five times a day, who fasts mm. every year, you know, who, who does all he can, you know, according to the religion, they're still in doubt. They still don't know where they're going, where, where they're going when they die. Mm. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, if that's the case, if the Imam, if the Mullah, if the all those righteous people, according to them, yeah. they still are in doubt. How much more I'm going to be in doubt wow. when I'm not even an Imam? And that was one of the other things that, you know, I was struggling with. Because yeah. I was thinking, okay, I'm praying, you know, I'm doing that. I believe in that. I'm not doing certain things. I'm doing certain things. But I'm still not sure what's going to happen to me. So you wasn't sure of your salvation. You wasn't I was sure not sure. End up. Exactly. So, and that was very frustrating for me. And I believe that would be that, that that is one of the in fact that is one of the reasons uh, I believe Muslims leave Islam mm. and come to Christianity because there's doubt. You're not sure about things. Too many voices, mm. too many doctrines, mm. too many different hadiths that con con uh, contradict each other. So what are some of the things that contradict each other in hadiths? For example, uh, uh, when it comes to prayer, you see in Islam there is two main sects: Shia and Sunni. So the difference, uh, I believe the difference is very minor. For example, uh, the, the, the Shia say, you know, the first Khalif has to be Imam Ali. That's a Shia belief. But a Sunni say, you know, it has to be Abu Bakr. So uh, the, the, whole, the, 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 whole, the whole debate between Shia and Sunni is all about, you know, who has to be the first Khalif. You know, but obviously, you know, themselves, they would, Add some more salt and pepper to it, mm -hmm. but to be honest, it's very minor. Mm -hmm. There's not a big difference between she and Sun. That's why they marry each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, that tells you there's not a much difference between them. Mm -hmm. But so other than who is the first Khalif or in, in English, who who who's the first uh, ruler, the person to lead, mm -hmm. uh, or 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 Sultan or king or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the main argument between them about the caliphate. Who's gonna who 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 Muslims gonna follow after the prophet death? Mm -hmm. That's one. The second thing is um, I would mention would be the prayer. You see, the Quran talks about uh, praying, mm -hmm. but it does not tell you how to pray. It tells you to pray, but it doesn't tell you how to pray. So because of that, then you're gonna have hadith. And when it comes to Shia and Sunni, you're gonna have different hadith. When it comes to that, so the Shia say is three times a day, the Sunni say is five times a day. So that's the another difference between Shia and Sunni. Shia pray three times a day, the Sunni pray five times a day. So there's there's so many other things as well, but it's very minor. So, but you know, you said something very important. You said that you wasn't sure of your salvation even when you was in Islam. Now, yeah. You know, I, I know what salvation is, and obviously you wasn't sure salvation means you wasn't sure of your end if you were to die. Yeah. But I know some other Muslims believe that when they die, that they, you know, they will go to, um, you know, heaven and maybe marry um, seven virgins, what have you. So what's your light on that? If you believe that you wasn't sure of your salvation, but other people have different interpretation of why that is. Well, you know, when it comes to uh, salvation in Islam, there are uh, there are certain people that are, that are guaranteed paradise mm -hmm. according to them, and. And the whole uh, idea of seventy-two virgins yeah. and those extra mm -hmm. is is a specific is specifically for them. Right. So it's not for everyone. You see, that seventy-two virgins is 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 promised to the martyrs. So martyrs in Islam are promised paradise. They are in a category of people who are promised paradise. Martyrs. Mm -hmm. Who else? The prophets are promised paradise. Uh, the not the mullahs, not the imams, not the normal people. Right. So the people who are para, the people who are uh, promised paradise mm -hmm. are the martyrs these days. Other than that, would be the, the prophets who are mentioned, who are had uh, who had encounter yeah. with the so, creator. So we're talking so, about encounters, so selected few. So, so, well, selected. So, talking about encounters, did you have any personal encounter? You know, personal encounters with God, you can share it some of us, not to take you off from, you know, the main course that yeah. we're going on about. Well, well, you know, in, in Islam, Allah is not reachable. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just, he, he gives instructions in the Quran and in the Hadith, yeah, according to Muslims, that you have to follow. And then he decides 
what happens to you at the end so he's gonna so he's gonna judge you based on the good things and the bad things you have done but you know even based on that uh, idea i have a problem with it about god judging you based on the good things and the bad things you have done the problem with that idea is this you see in the bible it says there are 613 laws mm -hmm. in the bible in the yeah. old testament That's right. yeah and the bible said breaking one law you have broken all if you break one you have broken all but you see in islam that's not the case because if that was the case mm -hmm. then how would god be able to judge you based on the good things and the bad things you have done because this is not the case in christianity or even in judaism right. yeah it's not about the good things you have done and the, and the bad things you have done you see in the bible it says um when i come back when christ says when he comes back he will give he comes with his reward yeah. and he reward he shall reward you yes. based on the good things done, yeah. or the bad things you have done yeah. you see the word or if you change it to any other words it's going to be a problem if that or was and that was going to be a problem that was going to be a contradiction mm -hmm. but you see there's nothing there's no mistake in the bible the bible says good things or the bad things you have done you see if, if he was going to say and it was going to be the same as islam that's not the case God is not going to judge you yes. based on the good things and the bad things you have done. He's going to judge you based on the good things or the bad things you have done. That's why he says, those who are good, carry on being good. Those who are evil, carry on being evil. evil. Do right. not be in middle. Because mm -hmm. you, you are good or you're not. Yeah. Middle would be counted as not good. That's, right. that's how it is with Christianity. That's, that's how it is that's with the Old Testament. But in Islam, that's one thing that, you know, recently I've been... Uh, meditating on and you know ask muslims about it recently because it just got to me mm -hmm. and i think it's a good question that muslims ha has to ask themselves yeah, about it, huh? so this is the question i have what if your good and your bad is equal what's going to happen mm. let's say it's equal it can anything can, can happen, can right? happen right, right let's say one day you do good one day you do bad and then you carry on and then you die so if allah judge based on that if it's equal what's going to be next What's going to be the next option? Mm -hmm. But I leave that to the Muslims to Absolutely. give us some answer, hopefully. <laughs> so, so we're still talking oh. about, did you, like, I was asking, do you, do you have any personal encounters with God? Like, you mean previous the... God or the recent God? <laughs> <laughs> when, when you converted or to, to you have, like, did God speak to you, you know, personal encounter to your dream? What, 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 what did you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any special encounters with it? Uh, I mean, uh, God has uh, revealed himself uh, to me in uh, multiple uh, ways. Mm -hmm. He has uh, spoken to me. Uh, he, and I've never seen him physically. I'm well, not going to lie. I haven't phys seen him physically. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I always uh, felt, felt him in my heart. Right. For example, you know, the fire. When I, be when I became a Christian, I'm still feeling it uh, when I pray. But... Uh, when it was so new to me, it was, in a, it was at the early times when I converted to Christianity. And, you know, when I was going to church, you know, when I was going through um, worship, when I was deep in worship, or when I was going through hardcore prayer, you know, the good connection you have with the Lord. All you think about is the Lord, you know, and the Lord is connected with you. When I was going through those things, or even when I was walking and meditating on a word, for example, when I was walking in a park, when I was by myself, you know, when I was meditating, and focusing on the Lord, I was feeling that fire in me, mm. and it was burning. Wow. So my, I felt like fire in my hand. I felt fire in my eyes. Right. I felt fire all over me, and you know, it did feel like burn. So that's one of one of the ways God was proving Himself to me, because I was literally feeling I'm burning. That's right. The fire was literally burning me. That 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 it was it was supernatural. So that was one of the ways Holy Spirit, you know, proved himself to me, you know, because it was physical to me, man, you know, when it's been burned from the inside, when it's not hot, when it's cold. You sound somewhere so cold, but you're burning when you're praying. And it's a fire all over your body. It's all over you. It's like flaming. That was one of the ways God, you know, he was uh, proving himself oh, to me. Is it burn? Is it like burn? Is it like physical? Is it, is it peaceful type of way? What it feels mean? good. It feels oh, good right. because you feel connected with God. Wow. Feel his presence. Because that is a consuming fire. That's right. He will not consume his children, but he, you would enjoy it. You know, for us, 
you know, he sees children is a good feeling. Mm -hmm. But to the evil, it's not because it's consuming fire. Mm -hmm. That's why you see when you see, when you go to the church, when a, when a, when a man of God, when a woman of God pray for someone, when they say I set you on fire, yeah. you see that's a moment the demon is gonna go crazy, yeah. right? Because they can't hack it no more, they can't handle it no more. Fire, but the person would enjoy it afterwards. Once the demon leaves, the person would enjoy and want more of that fire. More of you, Lord. Is it sung for it as well? You see, so that's one of that. That's, that was one of the ways I was really, you know, connecting with God. You know, because He was like, I felt Him physically. You know, Bible said you can't see God and live. So, but it doesn't say you can't feel Him and live. You know what I'm saying? So I was feeling Him. You know, I was feeling Him real. You know, and and also. Uh, I believe God uh, spoke to me and you know lead me through dreams as well mm. and uh, this is very popular for Muslims if you see and ask uh, the Muslims who are mainly from Middle East where the gospel is not as popular and you see Christians there if you ask them you know how did you convert you know what was the uh, the cause of a, conver a conversion how, how did you convert because there was no one for you to share the message most of them will tell you through dreams and and lord jesus christ does appear to us and to people through dreams as well mm -hmm. and that was for me as well so i was you know having dreams about you know what's going to happen in future right. so before something was happening i was i was experiencing in a dream and then few days later a uh, few moments later a few years later a few months later i was the situation i had in dream was happening mm -hmm. Powerful. you know and then and also, uh, I had, in, I had encounter, encountered with angels three times in my life that I've met angels physically. And once, they, once he saved me, once, you know, uh, he proved something to me, and then once they helped me out. But I'm going to share one of the in interesting ones. Right. Yeah. So that was the second time I believe I've met the angel. And that was, you know, I think I've, I've said that in the last testimony I've shared last time about uh, me being depressed about not, not seeing my grandma seeing grandma. I'm not sure if I said it yeah yeah. As well, yeah. Yeah. Travel, yeah yeah so what happened was you know I couldn't travel for so many years That's right. you know it's supposed to take five years for you to for for, for people to become British after mm -hmm. the agreement That's usually true, yeah, yeah? yeah but it took us three to four years extra on top so you see I always tell people you know me Whatever I achieved in life, uh, it was after so much uh, hardship I, I, I received it. You know, anything in life, I had to work hard for it to, to achieve it. And even the passport, why, why would would take me four years on top when it takes for others five years? So, so what happened was this. The miracle, uh, the miracle was related to life in the UK test. So... Uh, I went uh, for life in the UK test, and uh, when I entered there, I was full of stress. You know, I was just, you know, uh, yeah, felt like yeah, crying. Yeah, was, you know, yeah. the stress was like killing me. You know, and then I was going through so much because I was thinking to myself, what if if I fail? Mm -hmm. If I fail, then I'm not gonna see my grandma, cause I wanted to see her so bad, so I was willing to do whatever it takes. But the exam wasn't in my hand. All I had was revising and then try my best. So I did do the revising, you know. I've done my homework, you know. Then I went for the exam. When I entered uh, and sat down, waiting for them to uh, call my name and enter the exam room, when I sat down, I was so, you know, frustrated. I was so stressed, you know. I was I couldn't sit down, sit still, and then. While I was, you know, uh, struggling and you know, fighting myself, I saw someone came uh, and sat right in front of me, right in a corner uh, on the right-hand side of me. And then uh, when, I, when I saw him, uh, I felt that peace on me. And then uh, I became quiet, mm. like I became more relaxed. Right. And then I began staring at him. Because the moment, from the moment I saw him, everything something, changed. Something yeah. like something uh, unusual happened. Something unusual happened. Mm. And then he came and he sat right in front of me. And then he was like this, not looking at no one, 
just like this. It's very, very, and then he had peace in him. And that, and that's why I was staring at him, and I was confused because I was thinking, how on earth everyone is stressed out, everyone looking forward to pass that exam and go home. So when I was looking at, around me, everybody was, you know, nervous. You know, everybody was, uh, everybody was revising still, including myself. You know, still booking my hand. You know, till the till before I entered the, the room. But him, he was quiet, sitting like this. Very so cool. everyone is stressed out except mm-hmm. him. And I was wondered how, how how can that be? Why is that man not stressed out? Uh, and then I couldn't hold it in no more because I was blown away from the piece he was carrying. Mm. So I said, excuse me, uh, are you here for the test? Because I was thinking maybe he's the examiner or something, you know. (laughs) Then he says, yeah, I I came for the test. Uh, I think that was the only thing I'll ask him. I said, okay, very good, cool. Uh, He didn't say anything. He was just like this, not looking at no one. Like, I felt like he's here for me. Mm. So... They came out and then they called us to, to enter the exam room. So we went there, he went there, and then I went there after him. So I sat on a computer, two or three chairs after me, he sat right on the next side of me. But he finished so early, almost before everyone. He finished so quickly, even before me. And then he left the, he left the room. He left the room. But I was still thinking about him, you know, and my mind was still with him. That, that guy it was something special about him. Because I love him a lot. Mm. It's a bit rare to see someone and love him so much yeah, for, sure. for just, to yeah. just see him yeah. first time. Yeah. yeah. So I really liked him in myself. You know, I was telling myself, why did I love that guy so much? Yeah. And that piece, anyway, then I carried on with the exam because I was trying to be focused on the exam, you know, but it was hard that time because he was all over my head. So I was thinking about him doing the exam at the same time, you know. Then I finished the exam. Then I went out and I was thinking, Lord, please let me pass. You know, make make me pass, please. <laughs> so I walked to the uh, resort room and then I saw the guy smiling and say, congratulations, you passed. So that was after he left, right? And then oh, I was start crying, you know. I was so happy wow. when he gave me the pass exam, you know. I just quickly opened the door, took my stuff, you know. And then I ran to, to my parents because my parents were waiting yeah, outside uh, for me. And then uh, when, I, when I walked outside, I saw my parents, but they didn't see me first. But I saw them laughing, smiling, like happy. And then I was surprised. I said, wait, they were stressed out before I go. What happened? Did, they give a, did someone give them a call or something? So I ran to, towards my parents, but I saw them happy already. Mm-hmm. And I was so right. curious. But I still ran to them and I still ran to them and told them, right. Oh, mom, dad, I passed. And then I said, wow, you passed. And then they hugged me, you know. Obviously, I was crying. I was so happy because finally I wasn't going to see my grandma. And then that's the, that's the moment that is really mind-blowing. My dad said, uh, you know, before you come, who did you see one black guy, one was a Ethiopian looking guy, actually? Yeah. East African looking guy. There's one black guy who came to us before you come out. Just just before you come out right a few minutes before someone came to us while we we're in the car or waiting for you i'm waiting for you and then i said wait who are you talking about because i was so happy i forgotten about him mm-hmm. that time then i said yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i remember someone was there yeah. yeah and then they and then my dad told me uh, the guy randomly came to us and told us who are you waiting for he says they said we're waiting for our son he has an exam then my dad says he told us do not be worried about him. He's going to pass. Wow, wow. And then he just left. Wow. disappeared. He knew it already. And that was wow. before you had finished. Oh, wow. That was before I was finished. Wow. So he went to my parents. How did he know that you're my parents? Wow. And told them, who are you waiting for? No buy, no not, no high, nothing. Who are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, I'm waiting. They said, we're waiting for our son. Mm-hmm. He has the exam. Then he says, do not be worried. Well, He's going to pass. Come and then I passed. Wow. So that was one out of three. So, you know. There you go. Wow. Yeah, so Powerful. that was nice. Wow. So Great we, stuff. We, we, we've just got a few yeah. minutes, you know. Yeah. Um, I've got, um, wow, we've got about 10 minutes to go, you know, before we, we try and read some comments if, if we have any. And I'm um, as well as open people can call. Yeah, I mean, 
That's right. It, 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 <laughs> it's it's so it's so mind blowing in here. Yeah, the phone, the phone just line. to let you know, guys, that you know the phone lines are open right now. Questions. If you want to call in, you know, make any comment, call in to ask um brother Peter, anybody in the studio, any question. The phone number is on your screen right now, and you can pick it up and call. If you want to um ask us any question as well, if you're watching us from Facebook and you want to ask any question, I'm gonna be reading the comments, you know soon you, you feel free to write put in any question or comment and i will read them for you um but peter yes sir mind-blowing you know what 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 do you what do you make of you know that the concept of trinity as against you know islam on that what yeah it's very interesting you know the the concept of trinity mm. is so big and people don't know about it you know, the word Trinity doesn't exist in the Bible. It's not in the Bible, you know. But the concept of it, the, the meaning of it, what is it really is, what it really is, is, is there. And it's there in the book of Genesis, in the book of Revelation, and people are missing it. But when it comes to Islam, it's very interesting because, you know, in Islam, there is nothing such as Trinity. Mm. Actually, there are verses in the Bible that directly tell Muslims to do not believe three do not believe in trinity right. no it directly tells muslims to not believe in trinity and believe in one singular god right. but you see the problem with this is that if god is one person if he's not three person as we know he is it's going to be so many problems and so many confusions for example you see when it comes to islam you have to remember the love of allah is conditional it's not unconditional. It's a conditional love. So, which means, in other words, is based on you. So, for Allah's love to exist for you, you have to exist first. So, without you existing, He cannot love you because His love is conditional. A conditional love is a love that exists as long as there is something there making it to love it, for it to love, right? So that's how it is with Islam, because the love of Allah is conditional. It's based on you, your belief, and your action. What is condition of love to you? Who is it towards? Is it towards it's towards only good Muslims. Muslims. Only good Muslims. All right. So only good Muslims. It's towards them. them. But anyways, so when it comes to... And the Prophet, of course, yeah. But obviously they're going to say he's a good Muslim, right? So that would automatically yes. include him. But you see, that's the question I ask Muslims all the time. If God is right. not three persons, if he is one person, that's a question yes. to you Muslims. Mm. Who was he talking to in the beginning? He could not talk to no one. Mm. Unless, that's where it comes so interesting. Mm. He created being first in order for him to communicate right. to and speak to. But the problem with this is this. That makes God limited. Because that means God needs a created being first in order to do something. to do something but obviously we know god does not rely on created beings because he's uncreated god if he is god he should be able to do things without a necessarily need of a created being but when it comes to god of islam that can't be the case because he's the only person there so the only way for him to communicate to speak to someone the only way is to create he's not able to do it without the creation but if he's able to do it through creation, that means he's not able to do it without the creation. So that automatically makes him a limited God. So we know logically that's not going to be the case. He can't not do that. But the other thing is, who did he love? If he had no love, how could he be God? If he only loved himself, Satan only loved himself. Are you telling me Allah is Satan now? If he only loved himself? So you see, there's so many things when it comes to those uh, comparisons. Listen. If God is not Trinity, he can't be even God. And, and, and that's debate, one thing. You debate this topic very ferociously with a lot of Muslims in, in um, Speaker's Corner. Yes. Um, in Hyde Park. And I know you do it most every uh, um, Sunday. And and, and, and and so what are some of the reception you get from, or the reaction you get from Muslims when you talk about, you know, the Trinity per se? And and also I have another question as well after you finish with the Trinity. Yes. Is that, you know, the, the comparison to, you know, seeing Jesus Christ as, as, as a prophet. And what you, what you understanding from me and why Islam deemed um, Jesus Christ as a prophet 
and what your debate, how you actually reason, what we, you know, uh, your understanding and your explanation and clarification to Muslims about Jesus being more than a prophet or even being the son of God. Well, you see, it's very easy to prove uh, to prove Christ more than what Muslims claim uh, have, for him to be. It's call. very easy because we can use the Quran itself mm. we've got, we've got and, and see him that he is more than a prophet. Yeah. So, hello, uh, good, uh, hello, good evening, caller. Hello, good evening. Um, what's your name and um, who are you calling from, please? This is Isaac. Isaac Benjamin Yako. Uh, hello, good evening, brother um, Isaac. Um, how are you doing? You okay? I'm good, sir. I'm good. Sir. I'm good. Thank I'm God good. for your life. Um, what's your question that you like to ask Peter, please? Um, the question I wanted to ask him, um, what was his greatest challenge becoming um, a born-again Christian? And what advice would he give to someone in his position who has become a Christian from a Muslim? The challenges they're going through, what advice would he give them? Great question. Mm. Uh, yeah. you, you hold on, brother. You answer, please. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so what I think is this. You know, the, the, the question is a tricky one. Why I say that is because, you know, it depends on the individuals. Mm. It depends on their background. Mm. So uh, the advice I'm going to give to someone who live in a Muslim household would be slightly different than the advice I would give to someone who wasn't. Oh, that's right. Okay. Because for sure, we know the person who is the son of Imam, if he converts, he would not go through the things uh, the other person would go through. For example, someone whose father was not a mom. His father was just an atheist. Or mm -hmm. his father was just a normal, regular Muslim who didn't mm -hmm. care about things. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is this. If you... You see, when you become a Christian, mm -hmm. uh, you should not scared, You should not be scared from anybody or, or, or anything. Right. So uh, it doesn't matter if your father is a mom because uh, eternal life which is which is a gift from God, is what you're going to receive at the end of the day. Yes. So you have to uh, put it this way in your head. Okay, am I going to be scared for a short period of time and not make people angry and then be in peace with my family? Or I'm going to make a right decision and have eternal life, you know, and make them upset for a short period of time? And then you know, obviously, we join, we join them. Yeah. So what I would say is to pray. If you are ex-Muslim recently, pray more, and pray for your parents. Yeah. If you someone struggling with your parents, yeah. if you someone struggling with your previous friends or or anything like that, I would suggest and recommend you to pray more and pray for them, because yeah. it works. I've seen people uh, who are in that situation, and what I've heard from them was more prayer, praying for themselves and especially for those who are persecuting them. And what would you say to someone who wants to be, you know, who wants to change from him to become a Christian? What is your advice as the brother was saying? Yeah. So what I would say is, you know, I believe comparison is a key because comparison opens your mind mm. because it lets you think more than you, more than you, you do usually. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the best thing to do is for yourself to learn mm. from what is the truth because no one can tell you this is true or this is this is right this is wrong you have to go and find yourself sure. even for myself nobody convinced me you know god obviously it was someone god mm -hmm. convinced me in the first place you know mm -hmm. but it, at the end of the day it was my own choice you know to to be on that path or to be on that path mm -hmm. but comparison is a good thing to do it, it had it's been working for so many years from the beginning and it would carry on working, and I'm seeing a lot of Muslims who have converted to Christianity through that, through comparison. Comparison means the life they were going through before, and the life they were going through when they convert mm. by seeing others being an example. That's right. That's right. So, so, yeah. so thank, no, brother, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, does that answer your question, sir? Man, that, that, that was powerful. That, 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 that was very wise, very wise saying. You know, um, uh, I'm very, I'm, I'm mind blown by by our brother's testimony, and he's doing so well. That's right. You know, I want to congratulate him for for his courage, for his wisdom. You know, and for for what he's doing. I mean, I mean, by by watching this, there's probably somebody out there, maybe thousands of people watching out there. That's right. 
was so was so scared of giving a life to Christ, and mm -hmm. I, I believe that by watching him, you know, they, them, they'll yeah. get a, they'll get the courage to you know That's give right. their life to Christ and also transform other people. So right. well done, brother Peter, and, and God bless you for God what you're doing. You, God bless Omega TV. Thank you. God bless you, you and brother Bright. Thank and God you. bless you, uh, thank you, brother Bedford. Thank, and, you. thank yeah. you, brother Isaac. Thank you. you know, thank you for um, calling. God bless you and peace be with you, brother yeah. Isaac. Is our dear home. Um, he's an author, also um, you know, a pastor, man of God. Thank you. God bless you. All right. So um, just to let you know, um, we're still on my life is my testimony. The phone lines are open. We've just got a few minutes to leave here. Um, I'll read a few comments and then we'll have um, Brother Peter wrap up and then we'll be leaving. So um, Brother Isaac Benjamin, who just called, he said, God bless you. You're doing so well. Being a servant of Christ is the greatest gift ever. Well done, right. Peter. Okay. And Amal Masse, I don't know where he's, he's, he's from. But he says, I was a Muslim when Jesus appeared to me in dreams. And my life never been the same uh -huh. again. God bless you, um, God brother you. Amal Masse. Yes. I, I don't know where yes. you're, thank you. you're, I'm Hilda was watching you're, us. yeah, you're, 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 you're commenting from, but God please do you. let us know where, you, you know, you're, 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 you're commenting from. Jay Lavender, um, well, says, Jesus said, whoever believes in me shall not die, but have eternal life. God bless everyone. God bless you too. Um, we have Helen Rubin watching us. Um, we have um, Abid, Abid Masi watching us. Um, yeah, um, Hilda Shallery says, powerful. God bless you, woman of God. Yeah. Um, Hilda, you know, um, we would want to have you one more time, some time to come. Um, so basically, yes. We have a couple of people watching us as well. Um, Barrows, all those people are watching us. Yes, yes. So if I'm not able to mention, I'm not able to mention because a lot of people are watching. But if you are watching us, if you are watching us, everybody, God bless you today, I mean tonight, for joining us on My Life, My Testimony. So, Brother Peter? I've got a question too. Um, we, we've got, we've got, we've got, to wrap this we've got two minutes, so, literally. The last question I wanted to ask mm. was, Jesus being the Son of God, and also, you know, being demon as a prophet, and you understand. I know you do this. Everybody can find you on um, YouTube as um, Peter and Speakers Corner, and they can see. But some of these are some of the strong debates you've had. So can you give us a bit of clarity about, you know, the son, Jesus being, um, you know, as the, in, in Islam as a prophet, and in Christianity, we see him as the son of God. Yeah, right so so you see in, in the Quran, in, in the Quran, uh, this is where uh, the confusion is. You see, one verse of the Quran says, God is one. He's one, you know, uh, there is nothing uh, similar unto him. There is nothing, you know, you can compare him to. Uh, is, it can't be even in your head how he is. That's a concept of God in Islam. And he's one, singular. That's one. But, you see, when it comes to other verses of the Quran, you're going to see things that make you think twice. Because you're going to say to yourself, hold on a minute. If that is the case, as this verse was explaining, then how would you explain that? For example, you see, the Bible said, uh, in the beginning it was the Word, John 1.1. 1, 1. Yes. In the beginning it was the Word. The Word was this God, and the Word was God, and everything was made through Him. Mm. So you see, even in a Bible it says, the Word of God is God and is Christ. Yes. Believe it or not, same thing in the Quran. is there. Mm. It says, He is the Word of God. Kalimatullah, they, they say. So, this is a question I ask Muslims for so many years, and I ask it till I die, okay? Mm. Because this is <laughs> so important, finish, uh, and this is something, you know, they, they right. could never answer, mm. because they are stuck when it comes to those kind of things. And I challenge any Muslim, any time, any Imam, any Sheikh, any, even a prophet himself, if he comes, answer that question to us, please. That's, right. That's the question. So, if Jesus is word of God, according to the Quran, so that's the question. Is word of God God or not? You see, that's what I always ask Muslims. Mm. So if he is the word of God, the, ne the next question is, is the word of God God? If they say yes, the problem for them is this, then they have to accept Christ, not only as a prophet, as a God. That's mm. right. If they say no, then that means the word of God is created. Mm. So if the word of God is created, that means he is only the uncreated being, uncreated being out there. So if his word is created, then that means he was without word in the beginning. So he's been changed. He was without word, now he has a word to speak. And the other thing is, everything is created 
by the vote. So if that's the case, then how can the vote be created itself? What well, created the vote then? You see what I'm saying? So they can't say the vote is not God. They can't say the vote is God. Because if they say is God, then that means uh, Christ is God. If they say is not God, then the word of God is created. And God without the word is no God. And that's how would God be if the word was created. But we know the word was this God from the beginning. Right. It was not created, as John 1 tell us, one right? Tell us, yeah. So if the word was created, then that means God was without the word in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So you have something right. added unto God. So he's been changed. It's not the same then. So but God does not change. Wow. It cannot be God then. Wow. And with that is word, nothing can come into existence. Exactly. And the word is a creator. So if they say that, then that doesn't make him God then. That's the thing. Well. <laughs> right. Wow. So soon we have come to the end of yet oh, another episode of my life is my testimony. I believe that I, you know, have nothing more to say. After all this submission, <laughs> this is a person who has been at the other side, That's right. and he has come to see the light, True. and he is in Christ now. Amen. You know, and if you are at home now, if you are out there, and this does not encourage you, my brother, my sister, I do not know what to do or what to say to you. But this evening, I will encourage you that if you have not given your life to Christ, Please, tonight, I will ask um, Brother Peter to lead, you know, someone to Christ. If you, are, if you are watching us tonight live at home and you want to give your life to Christ, Brother Peter, yes. please, that's your camera. Please look into the camera and I want someone. you to Encourage pray someone. for someone and lead someone, someone into Christ quickly before, you know, we yes, leave. Yes, sure. So, you know, as Brother Bedford said, you know, uh, I also believe the best thing... Uh, uh, every individual can do is to give their life to Christ because mm. uh, you cannot imagine what would happen after. So the best thing you can ever do is better than being, I always say, I'd rather be a Christian than be a billionaire. A, a poor Christian is better than a, a, a non-believer who is a billionaire because one has eternal life, one does not have. You see, the Bible said, what's the point of having... Uh, I, all, all things world, but yes. losing your own losing soul, own soul. Mm -hmm. so there's no point you see that's that that's the verse that tell us and encourage us you know to choose life mm -hmm. you know because what is waiting for us when you believe in him is so much better is so much greater than you can imagine and you can even think of mm -hmm. so brothers and sisters i recommend you and i beg on you to believe to, to believe in jesus christ because this is the best decision you would ever make and enter him in, in into your life mm. so if anyone is ready to pray with me that prayer that's a prayer we shall have lord jesus christ i pray lord, christ, that you pray. come and touch mm. every living soul god Amen. touch the heart of everyone who are listening to us today Amen. touch the heart of those who listen to my testimony jesus lord name. and let Amen. my testimony be be something that is encouraging them. Amen. Be so. Let me be the living testimony for them, Amen. and open their heart, open their Amen. eyes. Let them see with yes, with Lord. clearance. Jesus let them Amen. let them believe in you, Amen. and let them trust in you. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, Jesus. please pray that prayer. Amen. Lord Jesus, Lord come Jesus, into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive, uh, forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. As I forgive other ones, as other forgive others. others. Yes. It, it, in, into to my life with your spirit and make me who you want me to be and keep me in your presence guide me send your angels and be a light in my life protect me from the evil one and make me to believe in you and trust you more and more Amen. Amen. God bless you, viewers. If you have prayed this prayer, I encourage you to find a Bible-believing church around your area and go there. And I and they, you know, will help you and and help you and love you and build you in in in, in Christ. And I believe that your life will never be the same. Viewers, same time next week, we will be back with another exciting testimony. 
from us all in the studio, from Evangelist Brian, from Brother Peter, from myself as a host, but for Nana Kwesio Fosu, we want to give, wish you a peaceful night. God protect us all.